Do you read books? I read a book. It's called Drop the Rock. I had to read this when I was in my IOP program. So this is what we're gonna be looking at, but I ain't gonna read it to you. I'm just gonna give you a fire hose worth of information on this book, what I got out of this book. And then we're gonna look at three things. We're gonna look at steps six and seven, because that's what this book is about. We're gonna look real quick at how steps one through five in the 12-step program lead up to six and seven. And then I'm gonna tell you five tools that are gonna help you get through steps six and seven. So hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for weekly videos right here on Recovery and Addicts. So you guys know that I was a heavy drinker. I put this in my life story. I was a heavy drinker for the better part of five years. I was drinking a pint every night, and then in 2017, my son was in a terrible accident. He got his head crushed by a UTV. He basically died in my arms. The kid that he was, he is not no more. His personality completely changed. He has brain damage. Still an awesome kid. You guys will see him soon on this channel one day. But anyway, after 2017 and that accident, I started drinking heavily, like really bad. I was drinking close to a fifth a night. I was missing most days at work. That lasted for about two years. Then I had to check myself into a detox center where I spent three days, two nights in a hospital detoxing off of whiskey. I was pounding whiskey. Shortly after I got done detoxing, I checked myself into an IOP program. And this program was very intense. It was five days a week, three and a half hours every night from 5.30 to nine o'clock. In the IOP program, I was in, you had to work steps one through five. And on your way to steps one through five, there's a bunch of assignments right in between them. In between steps one and two, we had to do a life story, we had to do a huge assignment on our character defects, and we also had to do a book report. And the book report that I was assigned was Drop the Rock. In a nutshell, Drop the Rock is about six and seven. It's about your character defects. And the book says your character defects are like a rock around your neck. How can you swim from point A to point B if you have a heavy rock weighing you down? It's not possible, right? You can't make any progress and you won't get anything accomplished. And step six says we're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. The word entirely means completely, totally, fully, wholly, and all together. You remember that video I showed you at the beginning of the girl flipping off the thing? Let's watch it again. The platform she's on is 25 feet in the air. The one below that is 16 feet. Now if you're somebody that's scared of heights, jumping off this is not gonna be easy. She plugs her nose and she attempts to jump. But what did she not do? She didn't let go, she was still hanging on. She was not entirely ready to jump. She was still hanging on and in her attempt to jump, she ends up swinging back under the second, losing her grip, falling and hitting her legs on the first tier and flipping into the water. She was not entirely ready. Now ask yourself as you approach step six, are you entirely ready to let go of your character defects? Are you ready to drop the rock that is weighing you down? Are you ready to have God remove all these defects of character? Or are you gonna hang on and end up in an embarrassing fall just like she did? Because if you notice, step six says all. So notice it says all these defects of characters. That's the ones that you know about. Your impatience, your anger, your lust, your greed, your selfishness, your immoral thinking, envy, jealousy. Now the ones that you don't see wants to remove those too. There's four basic reasons that somebody will not let go of character defects. Reason number one, you consciously hang on to them. You love them. Inside, deep down inside, you love your character defect. That's what got us where we were. That's how we became such pricks in our active addiction. Number two is we blame other people or other situations. Oh, it's not my fault. Come on, it is your fault. And the third one is we can rationalize and justify them away. We make excuses for anything. Oh, I'll go drink because of this and that. Oh, I need to use, I can handle it this time. What are you making? What excuses are you making? Or number four, denial. You just flat don't even know. Or you refuse to believe that you actually contributed to your problem, and you did. Now the first five steps lead up to the knowledge and the destruction caused by our character defects. So if you have not done a complete step work, a thorough, honest step work of step one through five, you will not be ready for step six and seven. And if you don't do an honest step six and seven, you ain't gonna be ready for eight and nine. So if you are entirely ready to have God remove all your defects of character, are you ready to humbly ask him? So in the book, Drop the Rock on page four, there's a prayer if you're ready to humbly ask him. You can pray this little prayer right here. I don't care what I sound like. I don't care what I look like. I don't care who my partner are. I just don't want to be like this anymore. On your terms, in your time, please remake me as you will. So as we reflect on our character defects, we turn to our higher power with confidence and humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. My dog's favorite thing. 
let's look at five tools that are going to help us down this path. Four of these tools were actually taken right out of that book, Drop the Rock, and the fifth one I heard on a radio, but I think it applies. The first one, find a ritual. The one that this book talks about is you can take your character defects, write them on little pieces of paper, okay? You can drop them into a hat, and every morning you can get up and pick one out and say it's impatience. The rest of the day you work on your patience while you're sitting in traffic, as you're dealing with people at work, or anything that just doesn't seem to go your way. Work on that de character defect throughout the whole day. Make a ritual out of it. Number two, use prayer. Prayer is mentioned in step seven. Prayer is being mindful, asking for awareness. Prayer can add depth and meaning to our commitment. Use prayer to ask for ease of grace and surrender. Use prayer to ask how to think and how to act. Use prayer to say thank you. You know what? You can use prayer to ask how to pray. Learn to meditate. And this isn't the empty of mind, I'm meditating, mindless meditation for nothing. We're human beings that are made to think. Use your mind to think. Take control of your thoughts. In this meditation, you become very mindful. You're thinking with a purpose. You're rewiring your brain. One thing that you can do is just let one word, one word, just meditate on one word. Close your eyes. Take the, Take word, the word surrender, 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 release, release, give up, give up, let go, let go, peace, peace, renewal, renewal, surrender. Do this throughout your day. Lay in bed as you're going to sleep. You can do this while you're driving in the car. The fourth tool the book says, prepare for a cleansing. We need to start from a clean slate if we are going to be entirely ready. Ask yourself, how's your language? Are you a gossiper? Do you use violent language? Start to judge the little things in your life that you think are less threatening. You can look at little addictions too and how you can attack those to caffeine or sugar. It's about putting your life in alignment and being completely honest with this step. Now the fifth one that I heard on the radio, this one kind of hit me hard. I drank for five hard years. From 35 to 40, I wasted that whole chunk. Wasted every bit of it. If you died right now, what would your obituary say about you? We sit at a crossroads in treatment, in recovery. We can become better people or not change at all and be who we've always been. Try this. Take 15 minutes, grab a piece of paper, and write down what you want your obituary to say. What are these three to six paragraphs going to say about your life? We have a choice this day to live to be better people, people that we are proud of. Step six. We're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of characters. Step seven, humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. Are you ready to drop the rock? So that's what I got out of Drop the Rock. I suggest you grab this book, read it, because it will help you in your recovery. If you like this video and I earned your subscription, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Stay tuned for weekly videos on recovery, right here on Recovering Addicts.